Welcome, Hope Center. How are you this morning? It's a nice summer morning here in Orange County, and wow, it's getting hotter than I remember it down here. But God is here, and that's the most important thing. Why don't you stand, greet each other in the name of the Lord? Boy, it's exciting to come to church, isn't it? It's exciting to see what God will do in our lives. We're so happy that you're here. We've got new people here, and we're excited that they're here. And Hope Center, you're such a warm and loving church. It's wonderful to have you here. All of you who join us by the internet, God bless you. God bless you today as you join us. I don't know what's in your heart, but God knows, and he's got something great for you today. God bless you. Our God is truly awesome. He reigns in majesty. Above him there's no other. From the city of Orange in sunny Southern California, it's the Hope Center of Christ. Sheila Schuler Coleman. I'll bring you no harm. Hope you should have borrowed. Pastor Jim Pinner. Come on, sing it. Hope for And Pastor Harold Shaw. Hope I'll bring you no harm. Hope you should have borrowed. And hope for Come on, sing it again. Try that again and say it right after me. Good morning. Good morning. It's a good morning every morning. Amen. It's a good morning every morning because God is good all the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. I tell you, I've had our family has had its fair share of little bit of knocks and bruises and right. You guys have heard about all of it. And you'll hear a little bit more about it later in my message. And I had somebody say to me, Sheila, I'm so sorry for what you're going through. And I said, oh, don't be, because God is good. Amen. All the time. All the time. All the time. All the time. And that's what we practice here at Hope Center of Christ that we praise the Lord in all things. We worship Him. We worship Him no matter what happens to us. Because, you know, let's just think about it. Something bad happens to you and you grouse and complain. And that's probably going to be your first response because we're all human. <laughs> grouse and complain. And then all of a sudden you remember, wait a minute, wait a minute. I can grouse and complain and I can go through this and I'm going to be miserable and I'm going to be unhappy and I'm going to make everybody else unhappy around me. But that, why would I want to do that? I'm focusing on my problems. I'm focusing on me. I'm focusing on everything that's going wrong. And now I'm feeling even worse. Right? Or you can stop yourself and say, no, I'm going to worship God. I'm going to praise him because what happens when we do that? Suddenly, we're not focusing on ourselves. We're not focusing on our problems. We're focusing on God. Amen. We're focusing Hallelujah. on his majesty. We're focusing on his power. We're focusing on he can do all things. And suddenly, ah, oh, what happens? Hallelujah. Hope huh. is born. Glory. Right? Glory. Why yes. are we called Hope Center of Christ? Because we can have hope no matter what. Right. Just by worshiping the Lord, Amen. hope is born. Amen. Why do we worship the Lord here at Hope Center of Christ? Because hope will, be, will spring anew for you today. 
And all through the week, if you need to, you can watch on our YouTube. You can watch via our web. And I've heard of some of you who've done that. You're watching three, four times a week. To, uh, Debbie does it. I do it. Whenever I need to worship the yes, Lord, yes. I just put it on and I and I let the music lift me up and I yes. sing the songs and right. I'm focusing on the Lord and what right. He can do. Right? Hallelujah. That's right. So, Lord God Almighty, we are here to focus on You. You are magnificent. You are majestic. Thank you. You are mighty. You are merciful. So, Lord, we adore you. We love you. We are humbled that you would be here with us, your presence, as you are right now. We feel your presence. We sense that you are right here with us. And, Lord, who are we that you are even mindful of us? You who created the universe. You who set the stars in their course. You who created the fire that burns in the sun. You who breathe breath of life into us. Thank you, Lord, for the hope that we feel even now. We love you. We adore you. We worship you and only you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to do what Pastor Sheila says. We're going to lift up the name of Jesus by singing, Lord, I lift your name on high. I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I am so glad you came to save me. Do you believe that this morning? Come on, we're worshiping the Lord. Hallelujah. He's King of Kings. He's Lord of Lords. And his name is Jesus.
Oh, we lift up his name because he's here to show us the way. Have you ever thought, I don't know which way to go. I don't know which way to go with my life. Well, Jesus said in John 14, 6, he said, I am the way. I am the truth and I am the life. He said, whoever knows me and follows my way will find him. Amen? Will find the assurance of Christ. That's the way. That's the way that you find the assurance of Christ. And it's through Jesus. So if you ever don't know which way to turn, that's the way to go. You simply go to Jesus and say, what way do I go? And he says, come to me. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory. darkness but will have the light of life how many of you know Jesus today how many of you have that light of life in your heart amen well he said that if he's the light of the world then we are the light of the world because he dwells in us and we need to take off whatever's covering that light and let it shine amen so that people around us can see Jesus through us it may be simply by our love our kindness a word of encouragement let your light shine hope center so that Christ can be seen in all of us amen amen, amen. he's the light he hallelujah he's the light.
stuck my chair in the middle of the backyard and just stared up at the stars and then Gretchen came out she sat down next to me and I, I, I said one thing I says how could anybody think this is all random uh, you know amen. and I just I looked at those stars and I thought how magnificent you are God look at this universe that you created and yet you're mindful of me Hallelujah. all through scripture it says every single person is here for a reason and a purpose and sometimes we go through our whole life before we figure out what that is and sometimes it will be revealed to us when we're in heaven you know God will remind us and say you remember that thing you did right here it has ripples because it caused this and this and this and this and this and it caused a huge wave over here so be mindful of that that you are here for a purpose and a reason I'll blow your mind. I was talking to a friend, and he goes, Jim, have you ever thought who brought Billy Graham to Christ? That unknown, unnamed person, somebody might know who he is. 
that unknown, unnamed person gets credit for all of those souls that Billy Graham saved. You do not know by who you touch in life what great, marvelous things God will use because of you, because you were obedient. And I'm always reminded, when I, when I think of the grandeur of God, I'm always reminded of Psalm 121. We've read it several times, but it's important for us to read it. I will lift my eyes to the hills, or the heavens, or the oceans, or behold anything in creation. I will lift my eyes to the hills, from where comes my help? My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. He will not allow your foot to be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps you shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. The Lord shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth, even forevermore. That's the blessing you have over your life when you say, Lord, I trust you. Somebody say amen. 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 Lord, I trust you. Yes. Just say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I really do want you. Yes, Lord, I really do need you. I hear you whispering in my ear. I feel you tugging at my heart, knocking on my door. Yes, Lord, I really do want you now. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. Lord. Yes, Lord, I really do need you. I hear you whispering in my ear. Feel you tugging at my heart, knocking on my door. Yes, Lord, I really do want you now. Do you want to live forever? Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Do you want your sins forgiven? Say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Tell me, do you need somebody who will always be there for you? No matter what you're going through, they'll always be there for you.
you what you gotta do Just say yes, Lord Yes, Lord Yes, Lord Yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Say yes, Lord I really do want you Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Let's hear it for Sarah. Amen. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, girl. Wow. Sarah, I have seen you grow, young lady. <laughs> grow into a nice, godly, spirit-filled woman. Mm -hmm. ah, thank you. Thank you, worship team. Thank you so much. I was bragging about you earlier that uh, if you don't hear a sermon, just listen to the worship team and you can and you can walk out with the truth, the life, and the way. Amen. 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 Yes, let them hear it. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Well, this is a time where we ask you to fill out our connection cards. Do you have connection cards in front of you? If you let me see them, I will know that our stewards are on their job, putting them out there. <laughs> Can you wave them to me? I see about three of them. I need more glasses, I guess, or better glasses. So, well, these connection cards, we want you to take time and to fill out these connection cards. This is the way that we get to know you, get to know your needs, how to walk alongside your needs. Our prayer, our prayer cards, when you're filling them out, I see about 100 people here, Then we need at least uh, that many prayer cards either prayer cards of how the Lord has thanked you, how he's blessed you, and you're giving a thanks to him, or your little kid is going back to school and having anxiety, let us pray for them, or if your big toe has an overgrown nail and you need a prayer, we want to hear about it. You don't have to be dying of cancer or having a, a liver transplant or kidney transplant. We want to know how we can pray for you. No request is too small for the Lord. And when you answer, show us how the Lord has answered your prayer, that strengthens those of us that want to answer prayer. That's right. So come back and tell us how the Lord has blessed you. And do that on these connection cards. And I'm going to just take a few seconds and let Albert just give us an interlude as you fill out your connection cards. you to continue to read your Bibles on a daily basis and make sure you have devotion time in your home with your wives and your husbands or your children also do a mission at least once a month like we were at the chili van yesterday and Jim served over 300 bowls of chili yesterday amen amen and we could have used another thousand bowls of chili. The need is out there in our world. And the church, I think, is called upon to help meet those needs. So we can't be just seat warmers. We have to get out and go and do the will of God. Can I get an amen? amen. We here at Hope Center of Christ want you to understand the word of the Lord. We want you to be filled with his spirit. We want you to sing the melodies that our worship team sing, not only vocally, but in your hearts. 
one gentleman here today told me that you don't want to hear me sing, buddy. Well, the Lord wants to hear you call his name. Okay, and you can do that soundly. And giving thanks always to the Lord for what he's done for your life. Amen? Amen. Also, we like to welcome all of our first-time visitors that are with us today. I won't make you stand up, but you know who you are. And our congregation is so huge, you stick out like a thumb. So, so we, want you to, we want you to feel welcome. We really want you to feel welcome. And to be a, and take part of our potluck after service in the fellowship hall next door. We would like to meet and greet you. And now, I'd like to call Katie down because Katie is doing a marvelous thing for our ministry. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Well, if you have not heard, our church is starting a thrift store. But, I know it's very exciting, but I need your help. Um, I want you guys to raise your hands if you have done these things. Have you ever painted a wall? Okay, keep your hands up. Have you ever knocked down a wall? Okay, good, good. All right. Do you have a background with electrical or know someone that has a background with electrical? Yay, I'm happy to see hands on that one. Okay, I need your help. We, our thrift store is going to be that first room when you first walk in. Um, and we need to knock down a very large wall. Well, not that large, but a decent sized wall and two smaller walls because we want to join two rooms to make it as big as we possibly can. Um, also, we're going to need to paint those rooms. I'm wanting to have a painting party where everyone can come and we can have food and fellowship and get this thrift store ready. So if you are interested, there is a clipboard on the table. Uh, you can see Susan Austin, my mom. Um, <laughs> she's got that. So if you can sign up and just jot down those items that I said, um, it's a great opportunity so that we can raise money for the church and all of the outreach that we do. We want to do good in this community. And in order for that to happen, we need to raise some money. Um, that being said, next Sunday and the following Sunday, we're going to have a book sale. <coughs> Um, hardback books are $2, uh, paperback is a dollar, and it's buy one, get one free. So we want to move some product, get some, get some funds um, as some startup money to be able to purchase things like paint and whatnot. And we'll also be taking uh, donations. There'll be a donation box that you could um, give monetarily if you're not interested in the books that we have. But we have a big selection of books, um, and I hope that you guys will help me with this endeavor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Katie. Hope Center is on the move, on the move. Also, uh, you may want to prepare for our tithes and offerings that we're going to be taking up uh, shortly. I just want to say to you that uh, we have a beautiful youth Sunday school that's growing here. Pastor Richard, uh, he's our youth pastor here. Then we have uh, Mrs. Shaw that has a smaller children's Sunday school. And uh, we would love to have your children. Bring your neighbor's children. Bring your children. If you don't have children, make some and bring them to our... <laughs> like Clementine May, right? Yeah. Make some youths. <laughs> also, I'd just like to remind you that our piano should be here at the end of the month. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, our... Our person that donated the piano uh, has to go to Oregon to pick it up, but they assured me that at the end of the month, we should have our piano. And Wonderful. praise God and thank you. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. Folks, we also have Bible studies here. Pastor Sheila and some of the ladies, they have a wonderful Women of Hope a Bible study class that meets here Tuesday at 7 o'clock. And the men, we have the Band of Brothers, uh, the Hope, the Champions of Hope. We meet here on Tuesday also at 7 o'clock. And we'd like to invite you to be a part of those Bible study programs. I mean, you think you get the Word of God on Sunday. Come to one of those uh, Bible study programs and you will get an in-depth view of our Christian belief. Uh, I had a gentleman to say uh, on one Tuesday, Oh man, this is the kind of stuff I need. This is what I like to hear. 
you know, because we can talk and we don't, we don't have to stay on a uh, strict time restraint. So please come out and be a part of our Bible studies. Also, we need volunteers for our food distribution center. On Fridays, we need volunteers from 9.30 to 12.30. That's 9 a.m., 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. And also on Saturday from 8.30 a.m. to 11.30. And uh, what, we are, what we are trying to do is to put together at least a team of about 20 people. And if we can do that, you would only have to serve in that food distribution only once a month. Right now, we have people that's serving each week, and we want to give them a break. We want to give them a break. So if you have that time that's free on Saturday at 8.30 or Friday from 9.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m., please, please come and be a part of what God is doing here at the Hope Center of Christ. Also, I want to remind each and every one of you that this is our temporary home. This is our temporary home. I'm talking about Hope Center of Christ because God is going to bless our socks off. That is my prediction, that our church will not be big enough to contain the harvest that the Lord is going to produce at Hope Center of Christ. And so we need everyone, just like we prayed to get here, Continue to pray for Hope Center of Christ. Continue to pray. You are the church of Christ. Let him use your hands, your mouth, your ears, your, your eyes, your feet to do his will. In the name of Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and Savior, we like to say thank you, Lord, for your presence with us today. Thank you for the filling of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the anointing that you've placed on each believer. And dear Heavenly Father, if there's someone here or on the internet that need to receive the Lord, yes. we ask, dear Heavenly Father, that he Jesus. would cry out to you yes. and say that he believed that your son Jesus Christ died for him yes. at Calvary and that he rose again and that he sits on the right hand of God the Father and that he took our sins away. And dear Heavenly Father, that they say, Lord, come. Let them say, yes, Lord, come come into my life. And dear Heavenly Father, as we prepare to receive the tithes and offerings, let us give them to you with a smile on our hearts, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you, dear God, for everything. Thank you, Jesus. 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 In your precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Revelation 4.8 says, the four living creatures, they all have six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they don't rest day or night because they're constantly saying, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. I never get tired of singing this song because I feel that we begin to join with those four living creatures worshiping the Lord around the throne and we sing holy, holy, holy to the Lord God. Oh, 
us to do is just to say holy under your breath you may be washing dishes and you just might say holy 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 it's a lot more fun washing dishes that way amen okay you may have a seat and let's open with a word of not open but before we begin the message I'd like to start with prayer today Lord God Almighty you are holy thank you for who you are Thank you that you are a God of gods. You are the God, the only God. 
You are the King of kings, the Lord of lords. You could do anything you wanted. You could be any kind of God you wanted to be. And you are a God who is merciful. You are a God who is loving. You are a God who will provide. You are a God who cares for his creation. And you are a God who is holy. Thank you, Lord. I pray that you will open our eyes and our ears to hear your word now in this message, that it'll be your message, not mine, that they will see and hear what a great and mighty God you are. May they be impressed by you today, O oh Lord. That's our prayer this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, today we are beginning a brand new message series, and it's on living a truly meaningful life. Now, I know you all want to live a truly meaningful life. I don't have to persuade you. But what is the secret to a truly meaningful life? There are a lot of authors who have tried to give you the answer, the secret to a truly meaningful life, and I always go back to God's Word. So this is a message series based on the book of Ecclesiastes. Some of you may not even know where that is in your Bible, but it's right after Proverbs. So if you pull out the Bibles that you have there, Psalms is almost dead center in the Bible, so you can look and see where it's about the middle of the Bible. Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes. So you can start looking for Ecclesiastes. In the meantime, while you're doing that, I have a question or two for you. What would it take to make you feel like your life has been worthwhile? What would God need to do for you so you would feel he's blessed you? Many of you pray, God bless me. God give me providence. God help me to prosper. What would it take for you to feel, ah, okay, God finally has blessed me. Ah, I've now prospered. Oh, God has favored me because this happened. Finally, I've been praying for it, and it's finally happened. What is that? What, is, what would it take for you to feel that God has blessed you, favored you, prospered you? That's a question. It's a good question. What would it take for you to be on your deathbed and to be able to say with total peace and total joy, I'm ready to go to heaven. I'm ready. I have no regrets. I've done everything I wanted to do. I have lived a truly meaningful life. What would it take? That's what we're going to talk about today. Well, to help you answer the question, we're going to take a look at King Solomon. Many of you know who King Solomon was. Many of you do not know that he was the son. You know that he was the son of David. But did you know that his mother was Bathsheba? You know who Bathsheba was, right? She was the beauty that David, King David, saw bathing on her rooftop and went, whoa, 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 I got to have her at all costs, even, even if it means taking the life of her husband. And so Bathsheba, he took Bathsheba. David sinned. And that's a whole other message in itself, probably two or three. But Solomon's mother was Bathsheba. And he was the one who was chosen to, to follow King David. And Solomon became king following King David over Israel. And one day, as a new king, God came to Solomon. God appeared before him. Didn't happen that often, not even in the Bible. God appeared before Solomon, and he said, Solomon, I want to grant you one request. What do you want? What, I'm going to give you whatever you want. One thing, what is it? What do you want me to give you? Well, how would you have answered if God appeared to you this morning and said, Richard, I'm going to give you anything you want. What would you want? Don't have to answer it. But what if he came to you this morning and he asked you that? Some of you might say, oh, I want power. I want to have power over my life, control over my life. I'd like to be the powerful number one man at work. That way I could dictate my hours when I come, when I go. I could tell 
which projects I want to work on, which ones I want to give to somebody else. I would like power. Maybe some of you would say, no, I don't want power. I want riches. I want to have enough money so I don't even have to work. Who needs work? I want to have money so I can play and go everywhere I want to. Some of you might say, well, I would like pleasure. I want to just be able to have fun and do whatever I want. How would you answer that question if you were King Solomon? Well, King Solomon's answer was, he said, God, you give me whatever I want. I want wisdom. Well, the Lord was pleased with Solomon's response. He said, well, since you didn't ask for riches, you didn't ask for power, guess what? God said, I'm going to give you wisdom, and I'm going to give you the riches, and I'm going to give you the power. And King Solomon became the richest king who ever lived, the most powerful king who ever lived, and was known for his wisdom all over the world. Indeed, Queen of Sheba heard of him, and she came to visit him. She thought, he is so wise. I have hard questions. I want to go, and I want to ask King Solomon what the, how to handle this situation and what to do here and what to do there. So she came with a caravan with spices, large quantities of gold, precious stones. I'm kind of curious as to why she did that, because he had more wealth than she did. But at any rate, that was part of the, the curriculum, not what they did back then. So she did. She brought him all these beautiful gifts. And then she asked him all her hard questions. In 1 King 10, it says this. When the queen of Sheba... And she was a big, powerful, rich queen herself. When the queen of Sheba saw all the wisdom of Solomon and the palace he built, it describes in 1 Kings the temple that Solomon built, but also this enormous palace that he built. When she saw the palace he had built, the food on his temple, the seating of his officials, on his table, sorry, the seating of his officials, the attending servants in their robes, his cupbearers, and the burnt offerings he made at the temples of the Lord. She, Queen Sheba, she was overwhelmed. She said to the king, the report I heard in my country about your achievements and your wisdom is true. But I did not believe these things until I came and I saw with my own eyes, indeed, not even half was told me. In wisdom and wealth, you have far exceeded the report I heard. Wow. What I'm trying to depict for you here is the wealth of King Solomon, the wisdom of King Solomon, the power of King Solomon. Like Queen Sheba, if you could have an audience with this wise, wise king and ask him, what are the secrets to your amazing life? Would you want to take advantage of such an opportunity? I would. Why not? And you can, because King Solomon left us so many writings filled with wisdom and advice on how to live a truly meaningful life. He wrote Proverbs, as well as the Song of Solomon, and the book of Ecclesiastes. And that's what we're, he wrote this book of Ecclesiastes. He is the author. So we're going to see what he has to say about having a meaningful life. And you're, warning, his answers might surprise you, and you might not even like them. But the man who is reputed to be the richest, most powerful, and the wisest man in the world has this to say about living a truly meaningful life. So here we are. Ecclesiastes, are you there? Did you find it? Chapter 1, verse 1. The words of the teacher, son of David, king in Jerusalem. This is what he says about life. The richest, wisest, most powerful man. Meaningless. Meaningless, says the teacher. 
utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. What do people gain from all their labors at which they toil under the sun? Solomon is saying all that work you're doing all during the week is meaningless. Now, I told you, I gave you a warning. You may not like what he has to say, but I'm not, they're not my words. They're King Solomon's. He's saying all that work you do all week is meaningless. Think about it. How many times do you get up, go to work, go through the motions, get in your car, go back home. The next morning, you get up, you get in the car, you go to work, you go through the motions, you get in your car, you go back home. The next morning, you get up, you get in your car, you drive to work, you go through the motions, you get in your car, you drive back home. How much of what you do during the week at work is meaningless? In the grand scheme of things, how much of it is meaningless? Do you even remember what you did at work 10 years ago? Can you remember what you did five years ago at work? Maybe a year ago, maybe you can't even remember what you did last week at work. But what Solomon is saying is, it doesn't really matter. And some of you are going through the motions day after day after day at work. It's a grind. And King Solomon says, that's meaningless. In verse 4, he says, Generations come and generations go, but the earth remains forever. The sun, it rises and it sets and hurries back to where it rises. And of course, we know it's going to set again. And it's going to rise and it's going to set. It's going to rise, it's going to set. The wind, it blows to the south and then turns to the north and round and round it goes, ever returning on its course. All streams flow into the sea, yet the sea is never full. To the place the streams come from, when they, they return again, this whole water cycle just keeps going over and over and over. And what King Solomon is saying is that life is going through the motions, but getting nowhere. You can be moving, people. I can be moving. I'm moving but I am going nowhere. I am making zero progress. Just because I'm moving doesn't mean I'm making progress or I'm leaving a difference. That's what King Solomon is saying here. Be careful because you can go through the motions. You can be going through the motions. Oh, how, haven't any of you moms ever thought I've changed a diaper only to know that in a couple hours I'm going to have to change that diaper again. I've changed that diaper in a couple hours. I'm going to have to change that diaper again. And then in a couple hours I'm going to have to change that diaper again, right? Has any, any of you ever thought, like I do, I'm dusting my house only to have to come back next week and dust the house again? And then next week I come through and dust my house again. Does that not feel meaningless? Does that not feel like I'm going through the motions? The same with laundry. We always have dirty laundry that has to be cleaned and it has to be cleaned again. My husband, he's always washing our cars because they get dirty again. You know, that's what, that's what this is all about. The wind is going round and going round and going round. The sun is going up and it's setting and it's going up and it's setting. But where is the meaning in it all? If you want to have a meaningful life, that's what, this, that's what King Solomon is going to get to. Oh, yes, those are things we do, and we will always do. But what if, some of you are saying, ah, but Sheila, if I had more money, I could, I wouldn't have to go to work. If I had more wisdom, uh, I wouldn't have, to, I wouldn't know how to get out of the, the circumstances. If I had more power, I wouldn't have to do the tedium. But especially if I had more money, I could change my circumstances. I could hire someone else to change those diapers. I could hire someone else to clean my house. I could hire someone else to wash that car. I wouldn't have to be stuck doing tedium because I would have all the money in the world. I could be rich if I won the lottery. Oh, what if I won the lottery? Right? 
I know that there are some of you out there who pray to win the lottery. I know it because I hear from you. In fact, most of you say to me, Sheila, I'm praying to win the lottery. Pray for me because I'll tithe. I hear that one a lot. I always say, save your money. Save your money. But if I won the lottery, if I were rich enough, if I were wise enough, if I had enough power, life would be meaningful. Right? Don't we all think that? We fall victim to it. But here's what Solomon, the richest, the wisest, the most powerful man, his testimony, he had it all. His testimony is this. Life is frustrating. Life is disappointing. Life is meaningless. Enough is never enough, not even for the richest man on earth. Because he says in verse 8, right there in Ecclesiastes 1, all things are wearisome, more than one can say. The eye never has enough of seeing, nor the ear is full of hearing. There is no satisfaction under the sun. And you're going to see that phrase in Ecclesiastes a lot, under the sun, S-U-N. And what that means is he's talking about here on earth, our life here as we are living it here on earth under the sun. So there is no satisfaction as we live as human beings under the sun. Solomon, he had not only had all this money and wisdom and power, he also had 700 wives. Now, I don't think I'd wish that on anybody, frankly. I know that one of us wives is usually more than enough for, the, for some of our husbands. We're enough nag, right, guys? You don't have to say yes, because then you'll be in trouble when you go home. But the, he had 700 wives and 300 concubines, and he still wasn't satisfied. Satisfaction is very elusive. And yet, we have another perspective in the scripture, because in Philippians 4.12, St. Paul said this, I know what it is to be in need, and I know what it is to have plenty. And I have learned the secret. Ah, there are people who think they know the secret to life. But this is Paul, St. Paul. I'm going to listen to him. He said, I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. The meaning, the secret to the meaning in life under the sun is being content with what the Son, S-O-N, Jesus Christ, has given you. The secret to meaningful life under the Son is being content with what the Son, Jesus Christ, has given to you today. Okay, you say, but Sheila, what about accomplishments? What about this degree that I've earned? A resume that glows with one success after another. I was victim to this one. I have more degrees than I care to admit because I was constantly trying to find that meaning, that what I'll be satisfied with, you know? Then I'll feel like I've arrived. Then I'll feel like I have been successful. And I would look at my resume, and frankly, I used to compare my resume to dad's all the time. I felt like a big, fat failure. Who wouldn't? But, uh, but what does Solomon have to say about this? What does he have to say about success? What, how does success impact a significant, meaningful life? Well, verse 9, he says this, words of Solomon. What has been will be again. What has been done will be done again. There is nothing new under the sun. You've heard this before. It comes from Ecclesiastes. Is there anything of which one can say, look, this is something new. It was here already long ago. It was here before our time. Nothing new under the sun. That resume, all those degrees, all that success, all those accomplishments, guess what? Nothing new. Sorry. <laughs> it's nothing new. 
However, in Revelations 21, 5, it says, Behold, I, who's the I? God. Behold, I am making all things new. Do you think you can make anything new? Do you think anything you can, you can create anything, really truly create anything? Absolutely not. We need anything we create has to come from the creator. Any thought comes from the creator. He gave us the brain, the mind, so we can think. We can't, you can't think of anything. With, you can't do anything without the hands that he created. You can't paint without the, the pigments that he created out there that he put in nature. There's nothing you can do without the creator. There's nothing new. And don't you find that a lot of times, especially the older you are, like me, the older you live, you see that it's not new. It's just been reborn. It just has a new look, a new little twist, but it really is just the old. We've seen this before. It's come and gone, and here it comes again. Nothing new. The secret to a meaningful life, to a truly successful life, is to live in submission to the Son, Jesus Christ. To let him guide, to let him lead, to let him show you what he wants you to do. That's true meaning, then. You will find true meaning. Okay, so what about fame? I used to look at people that these movie stars who would be on TV and we'd watch them, you know, my husband likes to watch Turner Classic Movies, and I watch with him, sort of. But at any rate, I look at them, and I see these people, and I think, gosh, you know, what? if I were on TV, or if I'd made movies, people would be able to see me for years after I was dead. That'd be kind of cool. I could kind of live on through movies, right? You think people live on through fame? Well, what does Solomon have to say about fame, and does it bring a meaningful life? Right there in verse 11. I know you're not going to like this answer much more than the others, but here it is. No one remembers the former generations, and even those yet to come will not be remembered by those who follow them. Fame is fleeting here on earth. The secret to meaningful life, though, is lifting up the Son of Jesus Christ. People remember Jesus. People's lives are changed forever by Jesus. It's him we want to lift up, not ourself. So what about wisdom? After all, the Lord was pleased with Solomon's request for wisdom. If you had wisdom, you'd be able to help others, your children, your grandchildren. You could leave a legacy of wise writings that people could read for years to come. And here's what Solomon who asked for wisdom, who was given wisdom, who was known for his wisdom. This is what he says about wisdom in verse 16. I said to myself, look, I have increased in wisdom more than anyone who has ruled over Jerusalem before me. I have experienced much of wisdom and knowledge. Then I applied myself to the understanding of wisdom and also of madness and folly, but I learned that this too is a chasing after the wind chasing after the wind. I'm going to go chase after the wind and try to catch it. I'm going to go chase after the wind and try to bottle it. How meaningless. How futile. The only wisdom that works is the wisdom that is found in the word of God. Do you want a meaningful life? We go back to the questions we began at the very beginning. Yes. Yes, you do. But it's not found. First of all, you need to know where it's not found. Because what Solomon is trying to say to you here, don't go searching for it here. Don't go searching for it there. Don't search for it in fame. Don't search for it in pleasure. Don't search for it in riches. Don't search for it in power. Because that's just chasing after the wind. You're wasting your time. It's not going to be found there. He doesn't want you looking everywhere but where it truly is going to be found. And where will it be found? It's not found living under the S-U-N sun. 
It's found living with the S-O-N, Son of Jesus Christ. In a, another translation of Ecclesiastes 1.1, 1, 1, the King James Version and the ESV Version say it this way. They don't say meaningless. It's meaningless. They use the word vanity. Vanity of vanities. All is vanity. Vanity occurs 38 times in the book of Ecclesiastes. And that word, I love that actual word better than meaningless because vanity is actually literally translated as vapor. How fleeting is vapor? How non-substantial is vapor? It has no real substance. It has no permanence. It has no significance. And that's the kind of life that I know Solomon is saying, don't go after that. Go after substance. Go after true meaning. When I first read Ecclesiastes with this translation and had studied and dealt, was delving into it, it just so happened that Jim and I were driving down from the north coast of California. And when we were driving down there this one morning, I had just that morning been in Ecclesiastes. I had been reading about vanity of vanities, how all is vapor, all is meaningless. It's fleeting. It has no substance. And then there we came upon Morro Rock. Any of you seen Morro Rock? This huge, beautiful rock that sits right there, right off the coast. And there was a strong surge of surf that morning. And the waves were coming and they were pounding against this big rock. And every time the wave hit the rock, there was a spray. A spray. Vapor. I knew those waves were powerful. And yet when they hit that rock, they came to a screeching halt and vapor. They were, they were reduced, those, surf, those waves were reduced to vapor. And they disappeared. Vapor, whew, gone, whew, gone. But the rock stood firm and strong. And I thought, that rock is Jesus. That's what God is trying to say here in Ecclesiastes. It was a visual of what, God was, of what King Solomon was trying to say through to us. Have a, have a rock-solid life. Have a life that is as meaningful as the rock, as moral rock. Don't search for it in these other things like the waves that are just vapor. Make it last. Make it meaningful. That's what your life can be. That's what God wants. That's his desire for you and for me. So that means, what does that look like in your life? That means that when you're going through all those little circles, like a hamster on a, in a cage, right? Getting up and going to work, coming home, getting up, going to work, changing diapers, dusting the house, cleaning the car, all of that tedium, all of that life, all of that life, that feels meaningless can be meaningful. It can be meaningful when you have Jesus with you and in you and around you. When he is with you, when you're there and you're, su and you're talking to somebody on the phone, it may be a client, and you're praying in your head, Lord, this person is hurting. Please help me. Show me how to be a light to them in their darkness. When you're changing that baby's diaper, you're thinking, gosh, look at this beautiful baby that the Lord has given me. Lord, protect her. Bless her. You know, it's just constantly walking with the Lord and praying for people and praising the Lord while we're doing dishes. Thank you, Lord, that I had food to eat today. You know, help. who can I find to help feed who didn't have food and doesn't have dishes and doesn't have a house with a sink? So you see, that's, that's just the practical. But the real true way is to know Jesus Christ and to live with him every moment of every day as you possibly can. Now, many of you know that my son um, and his wife gave us our first granddaughter a few, just a little over a week ago. And she was born, her name is Clementine May, she was born six weeks early made us a little nervous. But when I saw her, 
there. They had to put her in the um, neonatal intensive care unit in one of those little incubators. And I went in and I could see her and she was just born. And her eyes were that deep sea, deep, deep blue, you know, that looks like they just go on and on. They're really dark and deep. And those little eyes were blinking, blinking, blinking. And I thought, what is she seeing and what is she thinking? Just a few moments ago, she was in a womb where who knows what she was seeing? Was she seeing water before? You know, was she seeing her hand in front of her eyes? But suddenly, all of a sudden, there's light. There's a face. What is that? You know, I just was fascinated by her blinking little eyes and wondering what she was thinking. Well, I always used to think that if you were to try and tell a newborn baby, guess what? You're going to be born in a few days. And guess what you're going to see? You're going to see trees. What's a tree? Well, a tree has leaves. What's a leaf? Well, there are little green things. What's green? How would you describe life outside the womb to a baby who's in the womb? Can't be done, can it? They have to wait and see. And that's how they discover. They go from life to life, right? When a baby is born, baby goes from life to life. How do you describe heaven to those of us who live here on earth? Yes, they can describe it in some of our earthly terms, but we really, really don't know until we're there. How amazing. I mean, just think about it. A baby in a womb. What does a baby in a womb get to experience? What does a baby in a womb get to see? And, then, and they probably would say, I don't want to be born. I like it here just fine, thank you very much. I don't know about this green stuff or these trees stuff or these leaves stuff. I know where I am and I like it. What would you name, what, what does a baby miss out on if they're never born? And the same is true for you and I because the day will come when we will be born again. And I'm talking about when we go from the life here on earth to our life in heaven. Oh, we don't know what awaits us. And they can try to tell us, the book of Revelation tries to tell us, but we have no idea how amazing, how wonderful it's going to be. I had this conversation with my father a week ago because my dad was diagnosed with cancer. And it's in his esophagus, and it's about three inches long. And dad knows he has cancer. And when he was told he had cancer, he said, without flinching, he said, I'm ready to go home and be with Jesus. He said, I, I have no regrets. And I know that I've done everything that the Lord has asked me to do. Now, that's a, a truly meaningful life. A truly meaningful life. Um, the the uh, doctor who diagnosed him gathered us all around and he said that the cancer, uh, because of where it is, and it had spread to the lymph nodes, he said your father will have three good months left and then he will go down quickly. And so we were prepared. We were talking with dad. We were getting ready to, I was getting ready to call and find out costs of mortuaries. And we were having a, having a wonderful time praying with Dad and celebrating his life and remembering all the beautiful things that God is doing through him and has done through him. And then we had a meeting with the oncologist this past week, and we expected to have more of the same news, but un completely out of the blue, unexpectedly, 
the oncologist sits there and he starts looking my dad up and down and over and he says, well, you, sir, are a good candidate for chemo and radiation. We were completely stunned. He said, you can, he said, in fact, the literature says if you do chemo and radiation, it'll shrink the tumor. He said, and it'll give you two more years. We went, two more years? <laughs> so dad has prayed about it with mom, and he has decided chemo and radiation. He says, two more years. I'm, I'm ready to give it a try. I'm ready to give it a go. So uh, he'll be 87 in a few weeks. But I want to ask you for your prayers for him. And, um, but I want you to, I wanted to close with that today because that's a meaningful life. A meaningful life. Everything we do under the sun, S-O-N, is meaningful. Everything we do. And that son, that S-O-N, came to earth. He came for you and for me. Why? So we could have life, abundant life. Because without him, life is meaningless. But with the son, life is abundant. He said, I came to give you life abundantly. Here, here, and in the hereafter. Not, they don't have to wait to have heaven. You can have it here today with Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. That's what Jesus came to do. He came to die, and he died. He was sentenced to death. It says in the Bible, he was condemned to death, and he died. He died. So we could have life. And he rose, he rose, and he lives today. He lives today to give you and me hope, you and me purpose, you and me meaning in our life. So our life is rock solid, firm. And when you end on your, when you get news that you may not want to hear from the doctor, someday you'll get it, maybe, if you, unless you drop dead of a heart attack. But we all will come to that moment. And my prayer for you and me, I want to be able to be able to say like dad, unflinching, I have no regrets. I'm ready to go. I know I've done everything the Lord has asked me to do. Let's pray. Lord God Almighty, thank you that you sent your son Jesus. Oh, we want life. We don't want just any life. We don't want to just go through the motions of life. We want to live. We want an ab abundant life. We want a full life. We want a life that's built on you, the rock. We don't want our life to just be vapor or to be meaningless. We want our life to be rock solid. We want to move from life to life, from life here to life and hereafter when the time comes, but to have life here too. And so, Lord Jesus, right now, there's somebody here who yes. may be saying to you for the first time, yes, yes Lord. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes. I want to have that kind of life. I say yes to you because I want that life. I say yes. I say yes. I want you to be my Lord and Savior. Yes. Yes. I want to live for you yes. every moment of every day. If you've ever, if you prayed that prayer for the first time in your life, will you just open your eyes? Everybody else's are closed, yes. and just look at me, Praise make contact with me, and I'll know. Thank you that you Praise prayed that prayer for the first time. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
please stand for the benediction. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you that peace, that peace that passes all understanding. May he give you that faith that is unshakable, hope Amen. that is unsinkable, and love that is unquenchable. God bless you. Go in, in peace. Amen. Amen. Hope Center coming in with power and love and a sound mind. I know that this is a word for someone here today to take this with you during the week and remember what God's word says about fear. Walk in faith. Walk in hope. Walk in power. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you. God has not given us the spirit of fear. He's given us power, love, and a sound mind. Sing it again. God has not given us the spirit of fear. He's given us Jesus!
bless you as you go. We'll see you next week. Thank you.